Operation Pistorius when inept Nazis tried to sabotage America. On December 7, 1941, Japan said and attacked America's Pearl Harbor, triggering American President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Four days later, Adolf Hitler of Nazi Germany declared war on the United States as well for absolutely no reason. I can imagine it went something like this. Mein Führer, we should focus on the Soviet Union and Great Britain. We are not legally compelled to declare war on the United States, which is not lacking in industry. I am well informed of the United States. They have Jews and blacks and are simply decadent bourgeoisie. Other Aryans can take them faster than one says off with a shame. Hitler then approved a plan to sabotage the American war effort. Admiral Wilhelm Canaris was the head of the German military intelligence service, the Abwehr, and put in charge of this top secret mission. Now Canaris had bombed French installations in Morocco and destroyed munitions at Black Tom Island in New York City in 1916 during World War I. No, no, not that Black Tom, this Black Tom, a major munitions depot in which $20 million of military goods was destroyed and five people died in a massive explosion. Apparently, the explosion was first blamed on a watchman who lit a spark to chase away, wait for it, mosquitoes, a most formidable foe. It quickly became apparent that several German agents had blew up the place. Canaris now thought that he could repeat Black Tom's success in the mission called Operation Pastorius, named after a dead German dude called Francis Daniel Pastorius. The top secret agents for the mission were recruited right in enemy territory from the United States. Eight German residents were required, with two of them being American citizens. The six others worked various jobs in the U.S. They were given three weeks of intense sabotage training in German high command school near Berlin, Germany. Back at home. Hey Herman, do you like school? What do you learn? Yes, my, I sure loved it. It was very hands-on. Me and the boys just learned how to create massive explosives, incendiaries, and oh, oh electrical delay timing devices perfect for sabotaging degenerate American installations. Oh, it seems very applicable. Was there some sort of assessment you had to pass? Not yet. We just had to blow up um, hydroelectric plants, an aluminum company, some canal, uh, railroad repair shops, and bridges. For bonus points, we can terrorize the common populace by uh, um, planting bombs on water facilities, railroad stations, and public places. Oh, Herman, that seems so sweet. Make sure to get the bonus points, son. However, the mission was in danger of being compromised even before it had started. George Dash, head of the team, left sensitive documents on a train. Um, let's see, did I get everything? Um, toothbrush? Check, yeah. Wallet? Check. Hmm, highly classified documents, and eh? probably don't need that. Well, whoops, let me uh, leave these detailed plans of blowing up people on this uh, very public place. And one of the agents got drunk and announced he was a secret agent. Attention, attention, fellow drunkards, I am a secret agent. I will blow up random places. Wish me luck. Thank you for listening to this very top secret and highly classified announcement. Talk me out, will ya? On June 12, 1942, a submarine carrying Dash and three other saboteurs arrived at Amanganest, New York, 100 miles east of New York City. They had on German Navy uniforms so they could be prisoners of war if they were captured. Then they buried their uniforms, their explosive, and changed into civilian clothes. It was undercover time. Dash was discarded by a coast guardsman called John C. Cullen. Hello friends, what are you? Don't talk if you want to live. I'm going to kill you if you talk. Here's $260. Don't tell anyone about this perfectly normal encounter. Nothing suspicious at all. Nothing buried here. We're just normal men standing here for no reason at night. Cullen reported the encounter like the annoying kid who tattles tales on you at school. When the cops got to the place, they found all the buried equipment. The Germans had taken a train to Manhattan, where they trapped into a hotel. Four other Germans, with Eddie Curling as the leader, landed in Florida on June 16, 1942, in another submarine. They literally came ashore in bathing suits, then went on trains to various places. The plan was for the two teams to meet on July 4th in a Cincinnati hotel. Josh was getting cold feet and then called up Ernst Berger into their hotel room. He opened the window and said that they would talk. And if they disagreed, quote, only one of us will walk out that door. The other will fly out of this window, end quote. This guy must have seen one too many spy movies. Dash said that he hated Nazism and planned to report the plot to the FBI. Berger agreed to defect to the U.S. right away. On June 15th, Dash phoned the New York office of the FBI. Hello, 
Yes, I have some very important information for FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover. Me and the boys were planning to blow up American industrial sites and terrorize people, but I got cold feet. Okay, sir, may I refer you to the nearest mental hospital? Sir? What a crackpot. Dodgson took a train to Washington, and walked into the FBI headquarters. Can I speak with Director Hoover? No. How about now? No. How about here's Assistant Director D.M. Ladd? He can help you. Mr. Ladd, I am very serious. Here is the $84,000 budget we had for our mission. One million dollars in today's money. Oh, I believe you now, boy. Let me uh, arrest you right now and interrogate you severely. And so Dosh spilled the beans on his homies and everyone was arrested over the next two weeks. FBI chief who were claimed that the FBI had cracked the spy ring, like that one kid who doesn't do anything in your group and puts his name on the final project. President Roosevelt was triggered by these course of events and placed the Germans before a military commission. They were accused of violating the law of war, which seems like an oxymoron to me. Lawyers tried to get the trial in front of a civilian court, but failed. The trial for the eight men lasted from July 8, 1942 to August 1st, 1942. All of the men were sentenced to death. Although, Roosevelt lowered Berger's and Dasha's sentences to jail time for ratting out on their comrades. Both men would eventually be deported back to Germany after the war, where they were treated as traitors. The six other men were executed on August 8, 1942, in the largest ever mass execution by electric chair. Life doesn't always have happy Disney endings. This video took longer to make than my usual videos, but I will be happy to make more if it appeals to you guys. Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more great content. This is Scarlet the World, signing out.